So you're like, no, of course, like I have to show that I am better and I've done more. And to an extent that's true, right? But at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself the question, okay, well, if I'm just reading a bunch of stuff that me, myself and I as a judge maybe don't personally have a connection to because my personal interests just are about something entirely different, what makes that person interesting to me? What makes that text come alive? There's nothing noble about doing everything yourself because what you're actually doing is you're limiting your sphere of influence and knowledge when you have to be the teacher, master, lord, and student of everything. You're not called to do life alone. Winners have teams and they build teams and they quantify and qualify teams. So diving right in, three red flags that might be ruining your paperwork. I'd be so curious to hear what you guys think that they are. And chances are we have posted on social media about this as well. So if you are not in pageant winner secrets, first of all, what are you doing? Go ahead and post inside of pageant winner secrets what you think the three red flags are underneath of our post. And uh, feel free to comment on our Instagram as well, because I want to hear what you guys think are the things that might be ruining your pageant paperwork. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we had an amazing free paperwork masterclass. If you missed it, you definitely missed out. You've got to be inside of pageant winner secrets to join these free masterclasses which normally we charge several hundred dollars for. So it's the best place to be. Okay, so have you ever walked out of your interview only to feel like you didn't get the home run question about your platform? It can be super, super, super frustrating or worse, maybe you did get the best question in the world totally about your pageant platform, your social impact, you know, whatever it is for your industry, but you didn't hit the home run with your answer. You either blab for way too long or you got nervous to be vulnerable or A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? Whatever happened. When that happens, when you walk out and you're like, I didn't get the question. I didn't get to share my heart or you shared it in the wrong way or your perception of the wrong way. What happens? If you're like me, it's like instant overthinking. It's so hard. Your brain speeds up a million miles an hour. You're overthinking everything from your hair, your makeup, your outfit, your questioning, did I spinach in my teeth? Did I do everything wrong, right? Because you got one thing wrong. And unfortunately, th this can be the thing that ends up kind of ruining your interview because it is so important to get your why across. It is so important to get who you are across as a person. And that can be really difficult to come back from that when it comes to, okay, now I got to do my talent. Now I got to do my social impact pitch, but I already feel like they hate my platform because, you know, da, 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 right? So the overthinking starts. Your brain very easily starts to play tricks on you constantly for like the next entire day until you can rest up, kind of sleep on it and convince yourself that your whole interview, your whole competition wasn't hanging on that one fail. So that's why today I'm going to show you the three red flags that do count you out in an interview. And of course, also teach you how to avoid them and how to do it correctly, or else I would not be Coach Megan and you would not be listening to the Powerhouse Podcast. So as always, one quick little note, just making sure you guys know this. So a lot of you guys who are listeners, we have thousands of you who listen every single week. I want to make sure that you are aware that we also have a full-fledged video version of the podcast now each and every week. So I did want to make sure that you guys were aware of this just because sometimes I show things on our screen, some things I show uh, specifically, you know, whiteboarding or whatever. And I just want to make sure that you guys are a hundred percent getting the most out of these episodes. So if you've been a long time podcast listener on Podbean or Spotify, which is where a lot of you guys find us or Apple podcast, just making sure, you know, just look up powerhouse pageantry on YouTube and we have new videos every single week and you can go back and watch old ones too, which is kind of cool. All right, so diving in, what are the three red flags? Okay, so the first thing uh, that I have found in the last like seven years of fixing paperwork left and right, which is one of my favorite things to do in the world, the number one thing that I see is overkill. So this is specific to certain personality types for sure, but a lot of times it's for people that have every accolade, they have a 4.3 GPA, they have 17 million thousand hours of community service, et cetera, et cetera. And they want to make sure, and maybe it's a scholarship pageant on top of that. So you're like, no, of course, like I have to show that I am better and I've done more. And to an extent that's true, right? Because you have people that have the opposite problem. And we'll talk about that in a second. But at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself the question, okay, well, if I'm just reading a bunch of stuff that me, myself, and I as a judge maybe don't personally have a connection to because my personal interests just are about something entirely different what makes that person interesting to me? 
what makes that text come alive? And the answer is oftentimes you're not, okay? Now, I'll say specifically, if you're doing a Miss America community service interview, this can be a little different, but you still need to have the element of story and storytelling very importantly in there. Knowing how to basically craft a one page pitch that still has hooks, still has benefits, it's benefit rich language, you're writing it like a sales letter. And so that's something that if you're, you, you know, if that, that's your prerogative, you want to work on that this year, we can definitely help you with that. That's actually one of our favorite things to work on is paperwork, which is why we talk about it so much. But I want to encourage you, overkill, okay? In the same way, I always say this, just like dating, if you were to read someone's profile or, you know, you look, I don't know if anybody else watches Indian Matchmaker on Netflix, which is a great show. They look at the bio data, right? And you need enough to tell somebody that you have hobbies in common, that, you know, their education, what do they like, what do they value, but you don't want too much where you have nothing to talk about in a first date, right? So a huge reason why maybe you're not even getting asked questions, we talked about this in the paperwork masterclass about the things that you want to, is you're probably oversharing. And then the judges feel like they have nothing else to ask you about, okay? Number two, you might be one dimensional. You might be too one dimensional. Now we love a brand. We need a brand, okay? You might be the horse girl. You might be the academic girl with 15 degrees. And that's great. But I don't want your paperwork to come off like I'm reading a thesis about horses, a thesis about engineering, you know, whatever. That's great. But you have to remember that you are not your audience. You have a very diverse audience that comes from a completely different background. And that's where the art of copywriting, which is something that we teach all of our clients, and again, like writing like a sales letter, almost like in sales language, to be honest, to keep someone's attention for the entirety of a whole page if you have Miss America type paperwork. But even if you are in NAM or something like that, where it is a scholarship pageant and you're literally just listing things, remember that anything that you put on your paperwork, again, you don't want it to look like you have significantly less than other people. So I get that. But how can you beef up the things that you're doing where everything that's on your paperwork is something that you're actually passionate about and you actually have a story about, okay? So we want a brand. We don't want to be this girl who just does everything. We also don't want to be a girl who is just super one-dimensional and can't talk about anything else. So be a real person, right? And real people are balanced. And finally, the third thing that is a red flag is you're all over the place. So all talk, but no action. And how you know if you're this person, which is okay, just a starting point, you still have time is you're in the beginning stages of planning your platform. Maybe you changed your platform and you're constantly using future paced language. So like, I plan to, I want to, I will, things like that. No action, no bueno, okay? So how do we avoid these red flags and turn them into green flags, okay? It's very simple, but not necessarily easy. So number one, figure out what action you need to take to set the bar high and then take it take that action, do it. Okay. Number two, figuring out what is stopping you. Is it yourself? Is it somebody else? Is it a boyfriend sucking up all your time? Is it, you know, what are things that maybe you have considered totally immovable that are actually movable in your life? Like you actually don't have to say yes to them and you're not creating space for the things that actually matter. Okay. Remove them, get them out of your life. And then number three, figure out who needs to help you to get there and ask them, Sign up with them, do a session with them, get coffee with them, whoever that is for you, whoever has the knowledge and the expertise to help you win, get in the same room as them, DM them, message them, book a call with them, whatever it is. It's really that simple. Okay. So figure out what it is, figure out the action you need to take and take it, figure out what's stopping you and remove it and figure out who needs to help you and call them. That is how you win. That is how you make massive progress. Okay. Okay. There's nothing noble about doing everything yourself because what you're actually doing is you're limiting your sphere of influence and knowledge when you have to be the teacher, master, Lord, and student of everything, okay? You're not called to do life alone. Winners have teams and they build teams and they quantify and qualify teams, okay? It's why we've built our business the way that we have where we qualify every single client before we even want to work with them, right? Because I don't know if I want to work with you. I don't know if I'm the right coach for you Tell I know that, right? That's why we have a discovery call. That's why I set a strategy for everybody so that they win 
and maybe you never work with us, but you get encouraged and you get knowledge and you get clarity about what you should do along the path and the place and the journey that you're in, or we'll help you. And either way, you win, right? So I hope you guys enjoy this short episode. I'm excited to continue on. We have some great episodes, great masterclasses coming up, and we are building this next cohort of women who are going through our amazing guaranteed system. And for the first time, actually here in 2022, we have a place higher guarantee for anyone who works with us on a one-on-one level. So definitely book your strategy calls. Do not wait because those spots fill up and we only take a certain amount of women every um, quarter and we only do four cohorts a year. So make sure that you join uh, the greatest group of powerhouse women in the world. Book a strategy call to figure out more and see if you're qualified. And I will see you guys on the next episode. Bye.